Let's get into it. 315 brings with it some of the biggest and most life-altering changes to hit the Persistent Universe since 3.0, as the core gameplay pillar introduces two new aspects essential to realizing the vision Chris Roberts once referred to as Death of a Spaceman. Now, for this reason, this episode focuses entirely on the addition of... Yo, Weapon, what's going on, man? Yeah, it is hard. It is hard. I'm still struggling. What's going on, Wolf? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hopefully, Injury everybody and things healing, well with you. Which will change the way that players live and die in the Persistent Universe from Alpha 315 and beyond. There's supposed to be consequence to death. Do I want to just bleed out and die? There's supposed to be a fear of death itself. I think it's not just a case of how I'm going to be healing myself. It's a case of who's going to come and save me if I go down. Man, I got to... First of all, first off, right? I have to... Let me, let me get there. Let me get there. I'm already impressed with how they're animating their character when the play character is in pain or is hurt or injured. I think it's a really cool um, addition. Um, I'm liking it. Let's let's just get into it. But I'm I'm really liking it so far. Case of how I'm going to be healing myself. It's a case of who's going to come and save me if I go down. 315 is going to bring the next major step in realizing the vision that Chris Roberts had, and that is you are this lone explorer that is venturing forth into the unknown. The new mechanics and systems that we're introducing in 315 uh, around healing and death of a spaceman introduces the risk part of that exploration. Pretty much 99%. All right, that's cool. <laughs> All right, so I want to see. I'm curious. What does that say right here? What does that say? You are incapacitated. So, okay, so when, you, when you're when you down, it'll tell you that you're incapacitated. And I think that's a time right there. So it'll give you a little timer on how long, how much longer you have. I can't read the rest, but it seems like once you become incapacitated, you will you will be able to see a little bit but it will be more so um a grayscale type of um feel and um i like it i like it you'll still be able to see i wonder if you'll still be able to get your full third person view that's that's one of the things i'm 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 curious about but i'm liking this it gives you the amount of time that you have that way you can communicate that with anybody else i'm liking this all right Pretty much 99% of the times where you would have died in Star Citizen before, now you go into a down state. And a down state is a unconscious, incapacitated state that allows other players to come and rescue you. But when you do come back, you may come back with a very severe injury. So the injuries that you can come back with, you can, can range all the way from a traumatic head injury. Okay, uh, a okay, 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 okay. So... My my perspective of it of of how the mechanic was going to work was a little different. Um, I thought you get hurt, you get the injury, then you'll instantly be in the injury state where you're limping. But it looks like you first, if you get severely hurt, where you do sustain an injury, you'll first go into incapacitated state. So while in the incapacitated state, if it's not too bad, I'm assuming then you have a timer where you'll eventually recover where you can at least get up and um if you can limp to wherever you need to go you can do that if it's not too much of an injury then maybe you'll still be okay um but maybe still in pain or something like that um that's interesting so i wonder how long will it do you have to wait before you can get back up again so you recover and so that's that's one of the questions that I, I got. Chest, you know, severe chest injury or chest wound. You've got broken arms, and probably the most severe is broken legs. Each injury uh, per body part uh, comes with different symptoms. 
and as you accrue more severe injuries, your symptoms increase, uh, the severity of the symptoms increase. The head, it's mostly visual effects, so as you take injuries, your eyes sort of get vaguely detached from your retinas and whatnot, and uh, what you can see starts to go impeded. And we actually call this that is blood so vision. Cool. That is so cool. So if you get if you get hit in the head, okay, I see that. I see that. I see that right there too. And it looks like this player somehow. Can I? Looks like the player somehow has some sort of um, medicine already. Um. Yeah, I think he has some sort of medicine already. If you could tell right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, you guys probably don't see that. Hold on. Can y'all see my mouse? Y'all can't see my mouse, can you? And we Oh, there it is. So... Cannot show it to you guys, so... Um... Cannot show you guys right now, but... There seems... To, I'll, I'll show you guys so, a little bit later. As yeah. you take injuries, your eyes sort of... I think I'm blocking it. ...detached from your retinas and whatnot. And uh, what you can see starts to go impeded. And we actually call this blood vision. And it's actually not um, what you'd expect in terms of blood speckling on. It's actually the delamination or the, the separation of your cornea on your eye. Also, false reactions, that comes into play. So uh, the, the more severe your head injury, uh, the more you react to those. So to start off with, it's the same as usual, um, s s standard functionality. But once you have the most of their uh, uh, injury, uh, a strong breeze is going to knock you over. Oof. oof and then also we have to that is cool. That is cool. That's cool. So it looks like force reaction is also going to impact you in terms of wind, in terms of um, if somebody was to thrust towards you or, um, yeah, you can essentially be blown over <laughs> based on the wind and... So that's that's if you sustain enough injury. I forget which injury that is. Is it like your legs or your arms or maybe your chest? I'm not sure. But uh, let's see. Um, standard your head injury, uh, the more you react to those. So to start off with, it's the same as usual, um, standard functionality. But once you have the most of it, uh, uh, injury, a strong breeze is going to knock you over. And then also we have the chest, so moving on to that, uh, you have reduced stamina, so you can't run as fast, uh, or as for as long rather. The main progression of the chest is that you start to suffer in terms of your overall general health, and also at the top end as well, you're in kind of like a weakened state. You trigger a hurt locomotion, so you, you know, you can't really, you're not as flexible and mobile as you previously were. That is, man, that is so cool. This is going to be so cool, man. It, it, it's it's going to, it's really going to immerse you into the game, man. If you get hurt, you get injured, you're out on your own. Then, um, let's say you get injured to the point where you can't make it back. Let's say you're on a cold planet and you get hurt in, in this way. And based on the, um, this, how slow you're moving you can't make it back to your ship let's say you're coming out of a cave and you can't make it back to your ship then it becomes more so a survival game for you on that moon and you literally need to um send out a beacon for somebody to come and rescue you or maybe to heal you up and uh essentially yeah essentially rescue you and i think I'm liking this, man. This is, this is gonna add so much on every level. It's gonna impact everybody. I love. I'm, I'm really liking this. I, this 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 is this is looking interesting. And where the arm starts to go is that you start to have increased weapon sway. You can't carry as heavy objects. And on the most severe arm injuries, you actually have broken arms. That prevents you from climbing ladders. It prevents you from carrying heavy objects. So you might bend over, pick up a. 200 box and immediately drop it and when we have broken arms essentially we allow the player to, to do what we call one shot actions so for example that pull is the cool. trigger so on gun. okay so I, I really like this i like the fact that they allow you 
I mean, they could have, they could have, they could have done it in such a way where you don't even get the option to pick anything up, but they and give you the option to pick it up. We allow the player to, to do what we call but then your player character actions. will drop it, so for and the player character will drop it. Ladders, Let's see here. It prevents you from carrying heavy objects. You can pick so it up. Bend over, pick up a, a 200 box and then but then it. he can't hold it for too long, right? And That's cool. They didn't have to do it that way, but they did it like that. We have broken arms. Essentially, we allow the player to, to do what we call one-shot actions. So, for example, pull the trigger. Off. Um. Yeah. So, the addition of this is really cool. They didn't have to do it, but they did it, right? Uh, on to the what, fact the that account? you can you still have an opportunity to survive in, in in that scenario. So, this looks like in this scenario, he has in this current state. It looks like the player character has a serious injury to the legs, but probably like a a medium injury to not as probably a medium injury to the legs and a light injury to the to the right arm. So that's why he couldn't hold the gun for too long, which is really cool. And then moving on to legs. Obviously if you've got a broken leg, that doesn't really help you traversal. And when you get to that severe state, we put you into prone lock, so you have to crawl everywhere. It's going to be a severe state, and it's not going to be something that is you're going to want to happen at the bottom of a cave. So if you do receive your injury out and about, what can you do? How can you help yourself? Obviously, you can have medical pens. So medical pens are what you're using right now. They heal your health, and they still remain to heal your health. <sighs> They won't heal that as much as previously, where it was just a one-shot, heal all, reset back to full health, you're pristine. They just uh, bring back your health back to where it can be, depending on what injury you've received. The other thing that you can do, depending on the injury, is you can take one of five drugs that we're introducing into the patch. Yeah, Stevie, I think you're absolutely right. It does immerse you in terms of the pain. It's it, it's going to force players to be more tactical when they're going out, um, engaging NPCs, engaging other players. You don't want to get hit. You don't want to die. You know, it's going to it's going to make the game a lot more tactical on the first person shooter um, side of things. I'm really liking that. And they treat different symptoms. So some might treat muscle fatigue. Some might treat a pain relief. Some might treat Oof. other things like. So look at these, man. I'm 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 really loving the fact that they're adding the different um types of um what is what is this called? The the medical not med pens, but these these are more so like narcotics that you can use or medicines that you can use to address certain situations. Um medical consumable. So they're all considered medical consumable. Cortic pen. So what is this? All right. So it looks like the per the first one is called Adra, Adrena, Adrena pen. So this will probably just give you adrenaline. This one is Cortic. This probably stops contortions. Um, what is this one? Detox pen. So if you get intoxicated, that would probably help you with that. Med pen. Um regenerates your health points up to the point where you could up to the up to because when you get hit you can't really fully heal 100 percent you'll probably have if you do sustain injuries you can heal up to a certain point where um going to get your injuries dealt with will be the requirement in order to get yourself back to a full 100 percent yeah medicines medicines yeah yeah, Wolf, that's what I'm looking for. Medicines and opio pen. What would the opio pen be for? Interesting. I like this, man. I really like this. Like headaches and so on and so forth. The function is to mask symptoms. And those symptoms are masked for a specific duration. Mm. And the duration is based on the dosage that you apply and also the uh, the method of applying them. So we have med pens. Uh, we've got the, the med gun, the multi-tooling attachment. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, on um, as soon as he injects it, you guys can't see it, but there is a drug icon on the left-hand side 
where it was at 3% and when he injected it, it bumped it up to 25%. So, um, so I guess that's the amount of dosage it is. Um, the med, the medical, um, the medicines provide. So that's interesting. And then we also got the, the med beds. Did the efficacy of all of those increase? Sort of, we go up in, in uh, efficacy from pen to sort of gadget to med bed. Cool, when cool, you cool. give yourself any sort of drug, so that's healing or masking symptoms, you're increasing your blood drug level. Uh, it's also alcohol, so that that boosts your drug level as well. And as your blood drug level increases, uh, you'll start to reach thresholds where you start to see visual effects, so blurry vision, um, or, you know, muffled audio, that kind of thing. And then as you progress through that further, you'll start to enter drunk locomotion mode. Uh, and that's, as you might imagine, staggering around, looking rather uh, drunk. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to see a lot of players like this uh, in the verse now. If you reach 100% uh, <laughs> on your BDL bar, uh, that results in you entering an overdose state. Now, this is similar to an incapacitated state in that you can't move, you're in ragdoll, uh, you're seeing the screen fade in and out. Uh, but the, the main difference is that your blood drug level does decay. So as long as uh, you don't suffer damage enough to send you into an incap incapacitated state, and then Yo, add death, up, man. Uh, you will come out of the overdose state automatically. So this is what mm. leads to the okay, next so stage. So what he's saying the overdose state, is... State, and then eventually death. Uh, you will, as long as uh, you don't suffer damage enough to send you into an incap incapacitated state, and then eventually death, uh, you will come out of the overdose state automatically. So this is okay so if you take let's say for example you take too much alcohol you'll go into an overdose state and as long as it's not too much to the point where it's it, it you go into incapacitate state it will you you'll be able to recover once you hit in, incapacitate um once you're in, incapacitated then you're in a situation where you'll need somebody to come and help you and you'll be on a timer it looks like that's that's how i'm that's how i'm reading this it's what leads to the next stage of relief how do i cure the symptoms or injuries that i've received you can only cure those injuries based on going to a medical facility or a medical bed and depending on the severity of that injury will dictate which facility you need to go to now it's not a, a one bed fixes all um not all beds are made equal uh, we have the Cutlass, which is uh, a tier three facility, and that can remove mm. uh, minor injuries, so that the least worst of the injuries. Uh, you've then got the Carrick and 890, the tier two. They can relieve uh, so minor cool. and moderate injuries. That is so cool, man. We'll also have uh, rest stops. Um, there are clinics within them. And they'll also be able to, but they're a tier two facilities, so they'll be able to heal moderate and minor injuries. And then the, the Crem de la Crème, which is tier one, uh, you'll find those in hospitals, and those can remove any injuries. Mm. Interesting. So, we've talked so that's cool. Stage. That's cool. Like, if, if you're out, if you're further out in space, you get hurt, um, and you do, you do get hurt. Let's say somebody flies by with a cutlass red, they could. Uh, resuscitate you to the point where at least you can move around and then you'll need to get back on your ship and find yourself over to um, a medical um, either a hospital maybe a hot yeah probably a hospital at the main locations where you can fully heal up depending on the type of injury that you do sustain that is really cool okay okay cool 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 we talked injuries and we talked treatment uh, but what happens when the worst occurs uh, and you die so previously or well, currently uh, you respawn in a hab uh, that's out the window now uh, now you respawn in a med bed there's numerous locations that have med beds so that's hospitals that's clinics Carrick 890 uh, those are the, the, the ships you can respawn in at least the, the colors you can't your default respawn location is actually set as a, your home location. So when you log in now at, on 315, you'll be asked to choose your home residence. This home residence will be, become your home regeneration point. And this is what the main area that you have will be dictated to that hospital. If a landing zone has a hospital associated with 
Yeah, Addis, I am 100% stoked about the fact that I own a character. <laughs> I get a spawn point, um, as well as, um, a like a tier two medical bed. That is awesome, man. I'm loving that. With it, then that hospital will become your re main regeneration point. If you choose a landing zone that doesn't have an, a hospital associated with it right now for 315, but will do in the future, it will associate the nearest hospital to that landing zone. And you will be given that information before you log in and you have to confirm that. If you die and your regeneration point is not available, so for example, you set your regeneration point inside your Carrick and you're flying your Carrick and your Carrick blows up, you will then regenerate at your home resident. So that is the original hospital location that you spawned at. When you are incapacitated, before you fully die and regenerate, you will have a significant period of time to wait it out for people to be able to come and rescue you. Now, clearly, if you've taken a severe amount of damage, that time is going to be less. And if you've taken a moderate amount of damage, that time is going to be greater. But we're talking, you know, in the half an hour, hour, two hour range where, you know, th there should be plenty of time for somebody to come and rescue you. Clearly, if somebody's there still damaging you while you're in the down state, they can essentially coup de gras you, they can execute you and you will be forced to regenerate. But we are giving the player enough, uh, you know, enough opportunity to try and wait it out. If players don't want to wait it out, and that is their choice, then they can choose to regenerate immediately. And the one thing that we... Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Man, this is cool, man. I'm really liking this. I'm, I'm really liking this. So he's saying if you get incapacitated, if you get incapacitated, that person that did shoot, let's say somebody shot you, that person could still kill you. Man, so what what how this implies to everyone is you can't just be the lone wolf anymore you got to you got to at least have one guy on the server that you can you can rely on just in case or th this I, I mean i think this is going to encourage players to play together you know what i mean it it's really going to encourage players to play together to go out to be a lone wolf is going to be a lot more difficult to do Especially if you're doing like um, one of those underground um, missions like this one, right? It's, man, it's going to be tough. You can still lone wolf, but it's going to be a higher risk. If you run into pirates, they want your loot. They're going to, they can choose to kill you. Man, bro, the game is, is it's going it's to get interesting after this patch, man. Yeah, you, you, it, it's, it's going to be very beneficial if you're traveling with some, some level of medication, medications, as well as a med, a med, medical bed as well. I have no idea how any, um, how anyone can listen to that dude. Uh, this is like battlefield. You can wait, you can wait it out or speed kill yourself. The thing is, the thing is speed kill. So there's there's also gonna be one more thing. Let me let me let me play it through. Let me play it through when before you we talk about that. When you are incapacitated, before you fully die and regenerate, you will have a significant period of time to wait it out for people to be able to come and rescue you. Now, clearly, if you've taken a severe amount of damage, that time is going to be less, and if you've taken a moderate amount of damage, that time is going to be greater. But we're talking, you know, in the half an hour, hour, two hour range where you know th there should be plenty of time for somebody to come and rescue clearly if somebody's there still damaging you while you're in the down state they can essentially coup de gras you they can execute you and you will be forced to regenerate but we are giving the player enough uh, you know enough opportunity to try and wait it out if players don't want to wait it out and that is their choice then they can choose to regenerate immediately and the one thing that we do want to call out is if you do regenerate then you will leave behind all of your items and gear that's on you right now. But we can talk about that next week. There we go. So that's the caveat. That's the caveat. It looks like you can turn them over. And there's a loot button right there, right? 
So you can drag them, you can drag the body. And then you can, so right now the, the, this player right here is incapacitated. You can literally drag him, hold him for hostage. You can loot the body while he's incapacitated. So I wonder, so it looks like you can loot him immediately. I wonder, is he actually dead or is he, is he in an incapacitated state where you can loot him or you have to kill the person? before you can loot the body that's kind of what i'm also curious about i think you i think it they should allow you to loot the person if they're incapacitated i think that'd be a fantastic idea at least they take your stuff at least you live right um staying alive is going to be an important thing so i think they should allow you to one thing that i'm really excited about is the fact that they're saying that you can take anything that's on them so that's going to be really cool so like containers in terms of a backpack your pockets you know your chest piece there's going to be some some um, cargo space there as well not cargo but uh, inventory space there as well so um your weapons your 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 if you have a med pen if you have multi tools anything ammunition you'll be able to grab them so that's going to be really interesting so if you let's say you're out or, you're out and about and you find something some really cool items and you have it on you and somebody finds you and they they figure that you probably have some interesting loot. They could kill you or incapacitate you and then take that loot. Man, this is going to be one of the most interesting gameplays. Um, it's going to be deep, man. It's going to be deep. It's going to be deep. It's going to be deep, man. It's exciting stuff, man. So we still have a significant... Yeah. Amount so of we're going to hear more about the inventory aspect of things next week so i'm really looking forward to that and um it's uh it's looking really good man it's looking really good i'm really excited man what you guys think man